It's Friday, July 19th, right now on 12 News at 10. I'm Bianca Bono in Phoenix, where police confirm a missing woman is now at the center of a murder-suicide investigation. Tonight, we hear from the private investigator working her case who says the man who died by suicide had been stalking and harassing her for more than a year. Storms popping up in parts of the valley tonight, but this is only the beginning of monsoon moisture moving our direction. Nearly one year after a massive inferno destroyed dozens of cars at an airport parking lot, the victims say they're still searching for answers and information about exactly how it all happened. Tonight, we'll let you know what we've uncovered. And WNBA All-Star Weekend has arrived in Phoenix. See how Mercury All-Stars fared in tonight's Skills Challenge. 12 News at 10 with Mark Curtis and Karibe Devine starts now. And we begin tonight with police confirming to us that a 25-year-old woman who's been missing since July 1st was murdered. Loved ones say that Doris Maricela Aguilar left her house to go to the store that night. But then days later, police found her body with an apparent gunshot wound inside of a car. Good evening and thanks so much for joining us for 12 News at 10. I'm Kariba Devine. I'm Mark Curtis. When police found her body, she wasn't alone. 51-year-old Juan Cuellar's body was found in the same car, and he had a self-inflicted gunshot wound. 12 News journalist Bianca Bono is live outside of Phoenix headquarters tonight where a murder-suicide investigation is underway. Bianca? Guys, police say they're not ready to confirm who killed Aguilar, but a private investigator who's been searching for her tells me that she had been concerned for her safety and Cuellar had been stalking her for more than a year. We knew he had been stalking and harassing her. A disturbing case ending in the worst possible way. She had made it clear to her family that she was scared of them. To the point that where she had told family that something happened to her, that it would be him that would be responsible. Steve Fisher is a private investigator who was looking into the disappearance of 25-year-old Doris Maricela Aguilar, a young woman in the valley who immigrated to the U.S. from Honduras. A hard worker supporting much of her family back home with a passion for health and fitness. She went missing the night of July 1st. Right away, Fisher wanted to find Juan Jose Valis Cuellar, a 51-year-old man he said had been stalking and harassing Aguilar for more than a year. He was obsessed to the point where he had a picture of her taped to the back of his cell phone. Fisher said the two knew each other from working at the PetSmart distribution center, saying Cuellar was fired for inappropriate advances towards Aguilar. But that didn't stop him. And he started showing up at gyms. She switched gyms multiple times, but there were messages too. Some telling her he loved her. Others were threatening. One of the most concerning clues, the last Facebook post from Cuellar from late June, reading, getting my membership back at the gym. See you soon. Before Aguilar was last seen, she said she was running to the store. That's where her car was later found abandoned with her personal belongings inside. Days later, Phoenix police made a grim discovery. Two bodies inside of a car near a gym at 75th Avenue in Encanto. They ultimately identified them as Aguilar and Cuellar. Both them have suffered gunshot wounds. Juan's um, gunshot wounds was determined to be self-inflicted um, and Doris's weren't. As police continue to piece together exactly what led up to the murder-suicide, Aguilar's family is now trying to make sense of this tragedy, creating a GoFundMe, hoping to bring the 25-year-old's ashes home. It's just so sad what he did to the family. It's just heartbreaking. And Fisher tells me just a week or two before Aguilar went missing, Cuellar again showed up to the gym that she was working out at, and she came home crying. Police tell me they continue to investigate this murder-suicide. We're live in Phoenix tonight, Bianca Bono, 12 News. Mm, such a tragic ending to that story, Bianca, Bianca, thank you. Now moving on to a weather impact alert. Monsoon storms moving through the West Valley tonight. Check out this video. This is from uh, one of our, uh, our 12 News weather tracker that's driving right now on Sun Valley Parkway. This is near Surprise. You can see rain in that area, plenty of lightning strikes streaking across the sky. Let's check in with meteorologist Ginger Jeffries for the latest on the storm and what the weekend looks like. Well, this is just warming up for what we've got coming our way, especially on Sunday, but certainly had some pop up moisture here and there. Uh, right now, it looks like the most active uh, moisture that I can find. These cells are just to the south of the city, closer to Maricopa. The track, though, 
is showing they're moving away from the region. So even though there's some brighter banding, uh, it doesn't really look like there's a big threat for us, at least for the rest of the evening. Let's take a look at what Futurecast data says. Yep, these storms are dissipating. So even though we're holding on to a lot of moisture, it's going to be on the muggy side. Understand this is just the beginning of a monsoon flow that's going to take us through the middle part of next week. So the monsoon meter, we are upping the ante, especially for the higher elevations. We have a five for northern Arizona, the White Mountains in southeast Arizona for the valley a two. That means we're looking for scattered storms, hail and lightning. And of course, any of these storms have the potential of creating dust storms for us. So as monsoon storms are gearing up for Sunday evening, remember heavy downpours, possible blowing dust and reduced visibility if you are going to be out on the roadway. However, the monsoon moisture, that's not our only weather concern. We still have the excessive heat warning for tomorrow as highs are going to be in the one teens. I've got details on that coming up. My full forecast back to you. Ginger, thanks. New tonight, Phoenix police have made an arrest in a triple murder. The investigation started early Monday when crews found three bodies after an apartment fire near 48th Street and Warner Road in Ahwatukee. Police identified the victims as 27-year-old Marissa Honeycutt, 25-year-old Anthony Cesarelli, and 37-year-old Sam Lott. Investigators say they used evidence from the scene to identify 30-year-old Chase Christman as the lone suspect. He was arrested earlier today and booked into jail on three counts of murder. A seven year old boy is at the hospital with critical injuries after falling into a backyard pool. It happened around noon in the area of 68th Street and McDowell Road in Scottsdale. We are told that the boy was given CPR while rescue crews arrived. Tonight we're staying in contact with Scottsdale PD for an update on the boy's condition. Tomorrow marks one year since a massive four alarm inferno sent propane tanks flying into the air and torched dozens of cars not far from Sky Harbor. Tonight, victims of the fire are still searching for answers about how all of this happened. 12 News journalist Jonathan McCall is joining us in studio with more on why these answers are so important. Jonathan. Hey, Mark. It will be one year tomorrow when I was standing in front of that fire talking to you guys hours after hundreds of propane tanks sparked, destroying dozens of cars right next door. The property tonight is cleaned up, but some of the victims still trying to fix the mess caused from it. For an entire year. I'm so ready to put this behind me. Stephanie Perez has replayed this image inside of her mind each and every day is like frustrating last july her car and dozens more burned to a crisp at the sundance airport parking lot propane tanks at a next door storage facility prompting a massive firefight tanks shooting like missiles from that intense heat as black smoke filled the skies and as soon as i saw the picture i knew my car was gone the mother of three says after finding her car destroyed, getting back on her feet has now cost her around $50,000. She says her car was completely paid off, but she didn't have comprehensive insurance. Plus, I had to get a brand new car. Not a brand new car, a, a secondhand car, but now I'm making monthly payments. But she's not alone. She and the other victims who also had their cars destroyed in the fire are now part of a Facebook group where they continue to push for answers. We haven't heard nothing from no government, nobody. A year later, those burned out cars and propane tanks have all been cleared from this scene, but there are still so many questions these victims have. They say they want to know exactly who's responsible for this and how did this all happen. Phoenix Fire telling us it's now finalizing the release of an 87 page report on the fire. As for who can be held responsible, well, that one has multiple layers. 12 News has learned the federal government actually owns the property through the Bureau of Reclamation, but it's up to SRP to manage it. Then Sundance Parking in Canyon State Propane leased the property. Even after a year, the Arizona Department of Insurance says it could take a while before a decision is made on which agency will bear the cost to make Perez and the other victims whole. With plans to now work with a lawyer to get answers, they hope it won't take another year. So I'm crossing fingers that with her, I'm able to do some, you know, get 
a solution and get some answers of what happened. And Jonathan, it's already been a year since this happened. There's still so many questions left. Um, have police or fire released any more detailed reports on what happened that day? Actually, right now, according to Stephanie Perez, the only report they've received so far is just the police report, which doesn't provide too many details on exactly what may have sparked this. But again, 12 News has learned, and we've been in contact with Phoenix Fire, that they are working on releasing that report to us, all 87 pages. As soon as we get more, as soon as we get it in our hands, we'll definitely go through it and let you know what's inside of it. Our Kariba. All right, Jonathan, thank you. Developing right now in Surprise, police say that a stretch of road is closed due to a water line break that's caused a sinkhole. This is a live look right now from the scene. This is near Eastham Parkway and Bell Road. Police say that the area will be shut down to traffic all weekend. We're told that residents of the Bell West Ranch community can access Eastham Parkway from Cotton Lane. Police say that water service in the area was interrupted for about an hour and a half. Crews are actively working to make some repairs tonight.